Hello, darlings! Who's ready for some more Indian food adventures around Seattle? This time we're digging into Barti Gosht, Masala Utapam, Mega Dosa, Jackfruit Dosa, Nalamilagu Chicken Curry, Naan, Dum Biryani, Parota, Steamed Dessert, and wow, there's more! We also try snacks from a local Indian market. Ready or not, like this video and let's explore! Welcome back to the Indian food tour. Last time we did part one, we checked out downtown Seattle area. Today we're venturing out to Issaquah. And our first spot today is naan and curry. Now there's a location here in Issaquah and another one in Renton. They are said to serve authentic Pakistani and Indian cuisine. And on their website says they only serve halal food. And right now they don't do dine-in, so we just ordered takeout. Here we have balti gosht with chicken. Whoa, how many pounds is this? At least four pounds, you think? Whoa, that's wow, a lot of rice. of rice. This dish is dum biryani. There are many kinds of biryani and ingredients vary on the region. Could also be made vegetarian. The biryani we try today can be ordered with chicken, lamb, or vegetables. When you look closely at the basmati rice, it kind of looks like noodles chopped up real short. It smells so good. A pile of fried onions sits on the top. Mix it all up and get that party in the mouth. My first bite had a strong tomato flavor. That's real good! It is spicy but ooh, so delicious. Oh, freaking on in sweat though. Simply put, it's salty, savory, and spicy. Triple S. When we first opened the box, it looked like just rice, but there is plenty of pieces of protein. I dug around and there's like a chunk of lamb here, chunk of lamb here, 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 here. Oh, what's that? Chili! <laughs> what's this, you ask? A piece of cinnamon stick. And mommy, oh, she's like, <sighs> but she can't stop eating. <laughs> it is summer in here. <laughs> I'm sweating. How are you still wearing that jacket? <laughs> okay, do, can you see my skin is like sweaty? It's like all getting shiny and glowy. Got that biryani glow. As for the texture of the lamb, it's not like melt in your mouth texture, but it is tasty. Yeah, soft enough. Soft enough. Mm -hmm. Onto the balti gosht. Your choice of meat is sauteed with caramelized onion in a garlic and black pepper sauce. First spoonful, we're gonna have it alone. Just feel the flavor of that balti gosht. Mmm. Wow, more flavorful. I really feel the onion in that. Ooh, this reminds me of onion rings. Maybe it's safe to say people who like onion rings will like this. I just had a piece of this chicken. It's softer than the lamb. I just realized I forgot to order like a naan, roti, or rice with this. Like a plain rice. Also I need naan. Naan. <laughs> naan. Hello, um, I ordered a bunch of food earlier, but I realized I forgot to order naan. Woo! It's hot! Oh, it smells so good. Capture the smell. Capture! Lock it in a bottle. Turn into perfume. You know that joy you get when you smell fresh bread? It's that kind of feeling. This is a plain naan. Look at those cute burnt bubbles. Dip that naan in the balti gosht. Do you like it with the naan or without? Absolutely with naan. It is a chemistry of spices. I really like it. Ooh, some of the pieces of chicken in here are pretty big. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big piece of chicken! <laughs> in the camera, this bowl looks small, but it is pretty filling. It's so glossy because of the oil. Of the two dishes we tried so far, which is your favorite? Chicken ghost. Ghost? Yeah, ghost. <laughs> ghost. <laughs> ghost. Karamboya. <laughs> Balti ghost. Ghost. Biryani is one of my favorite Indian dish, but Balti ghost. It's my new favorite. Oh! Ooh. If it comes to daily eats, of the two, I prefer the dum biryani. However, the balti gosht, that is heavier and it's more satisfying. You know, sometimes life feels boring or like you just like, you know, life gets tiring and you just want some flavor or something awesome like balti gosht. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Alright, it is time for dessert. We got gulab jamun. Gulab jamun are deep fried balls of dough soaked in sweet cardamom syrup. It reminds me of silkworm cocoon. You don't need to chew. This camera just shut off on me because the internal temperature got hot. So we're switching over to the phone. 
it's like a sponge that just dissolves real fast. I'm getting thirsty. A few minutes down the road is an Indian grocery store connected to a restaurant. Enjoy your meal as you look at the Issaquah Creek. Let's see what's on the menu. They serve both vegetarian and non vegetarian dishes. Let's explore the aisles and see what treats await. Ooh, so many snacks. This is attractive. You're coming with us. This snack looks like the outline of a flower. Reminds me of Thai lotus flower cookies. The produce section has TVs displaying prices. So we picked up four Indian snacks. We'll try them later in this video, so stay tuned. And now we're going to take a walk. There are hiking trails in Issaquah. Pretty soon there's gonna be traffic from Issaquah towards Kirkland. So let's head over to Kirkland to take a walk and then dinner time. It's a short trail. You could keep doing loops around the water trail if you're in the area or if you're a local. It's a good place to just have a short walk. Or if you keep looping around, a long walk. A short walk away is the Old Market Street Trail, which connects to Juanita Bay Park. The waters are a protected wildlife habitat area. You'll see various species of birds just bobbing up and down, going with the flow, wherever the water takes them. Oh yes! Right next to the road, we saw a tree with clusters of mushrooms. Pretty sure it's oyster mushrooms. Didn't pick them, but definitely admired them. This next restaurant is called Katakali, named after a traditional Indian dance drama. Upon entering, you'll see a doll dressed up in the colorful Katakali attire. The restaurant specializes in cuisine of Kerala. Kerala is a South Indian state on the tropical Malabar coast. Katakali just opened its doors for dinner. We're the first customers of the night. You bet we're gonna eat some spicy dishes. So we got the pistachio rose water lassi to act as a fire extinguisher. It tastes like a sweet kefir. We already drank a lot of it. We have to save it for the curry. The dosa arrives. The dosa we tried today is chakatoran dosa, which contains green jackfruit, Kerala spices, and grated coconut. It comes with two chutneys and sambar, Thought it'd be sweet because it's jackfruit, but then I remembered the filling contains green jackfruit. An unripe jackfruit tastes neutral. Unripe jackfruit also absorbs whatever flavors are cooked with it. Very soft interior. It is like dumpling filling. The green chutney is made of mint, cilantro, green chili, and ginger. The jackfruit dosa is spicy, so when you have it with the green chutney, it's spicy on spicy. Here, you want the fire extinguisher? The white chutney has grated coconut, ginger, and green chili. With the coconut chutney, it's more cooling. Of the two, I prefer the coconut chutney. How about you, Momio? Green or coconut chutney? Coconut. The green one is very spicy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On to the next dish. The Nala Milagu chicken curry is made of boneless chicken, cracked black pepper, onion gravy, ginger, garlic, cumin, curry leaves, and cilantro. Came with a bowl of basmati rice but we had to try it with the Malabar Parota. It's a multi-layered flatbread. We've been warned, this is a very spicy one. <laughs> Feel it in my ears. If we were to eat this whole curry in one sitting, I think I need two lassi. I love how like stringy it is. Flaky. For dessert, we get the Chakaya Lada. Yelada is a traditional delicacy from Kerala, made of rice cake steamed in banana leaf. 
The one we tried today contains jackfruit with grated coconut and a cherry on top. The skin, the outside, it makes me think of like a very thick mochi. Other diners joined in the room we were in, so I got a little shy. I, I definitely don't want to distract other diners, especially if they're next to me. So I just took some notes on my iPhone, and then now we're going to talk about uh, additional flavor stuff. So the dessert we had, for some reason, I was predicting it would be very sweet. After all, you know, dessert tends to be sweet. But actually, it was more buttery than sweet to me. And it was sweet, but very lightly sweet. Mamiyo, what's your favorite thing we had here? <laughs> I like dosa. Dosa. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know, the dosa, it, like the way it's curved and it looks all hollow inside, but it is pretty filling. And I guess it was really filling because we were like drinking the lassi as well. The lassi, maybe it was the lassi that was way more filling to us. So the next restaurant is Samburna, which I've heard Indians pronounce as Sampurna. Sampurna is said to serve authentic South Indian dishes, including Chetanad style food. It's 11.30 and they just opened up for lunch. Here are some peeks at the menu. Before anything else, we are given Sakura Pongol, which is made of rice, jaggery, and mung dal. Mung dal are split mung beans. Other ingredients include grated coconut and cashew. So sweet! <laughs> It's like a dessert. I get a little bit of like a corn vibe. Wowie, the mega dosa. Two of these together would be taller than us. The dosa comes with potato masala, tomato chutney, coconut chutney, and sambar. How many inches is this? How many feet? Longer than three feet. One, two, three, four, five hand widths of mine. From thumb tip to pinky tip, my extended hand is 7 inches wide. 7 inches times 5 is 35 inches. The dosa is about 3 feet long. The first and last time I had this is so good. Oh, I'm so excited. It's like a cookie. <laughs> cookie, really? Yeah, cookie. Uh, picture is like a crumbly cookie. Mm -hmm. Inside, there are onions. Tastes like sourdough bread, except thin and crispy, and so yummy. The traditional way to eat dosa is by ripping a piece off and dipping it into the chutney or the sambar. Sometimes the filling is served inside the dosa, like the jackfruit dosa at Katakali. Other times the filling is served on the side, like here at Sampurna, in which case you take your piece of dosa and wrap it around the potato masala. The tomato chutney is mostly very smooth, but the coconut chutney, there's a little bit like, um, you get these like little bits. They're smooth, but like, like kind of a grainy. One thing I didn't try yet is a sambar. Lentilicious. Oh, spicy. I feel it in my ears. Hello to the masala utapam. Utapam uses dosa batter, but is thicker and has toppings. Yes, we were advised to take this out. Take that chili, it's gonna be really spicy. It tastes like Korean pindetta. It's pretty gentle. Mm -hmm. Let's add some more oomph with the chutney. Definitely taste of tomato. Did you try all the sauces? Yeah. Which is your favorite? Favorite? <laughs> we are told this chicken chetanad has 9 to 10 blended spices. Chicken chetanad is a curry dish from Chetanad Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is a South Indian state. Is it spicy? It says it's spicy on the menu. No? It's not spicy yet? No. It is spicy, but not much. So soft, the meat. You tried the chicken chicken or it's really good. This is made of uh, flour and uh, some of them they use uh, egg in it, but we don't put egg in it. I'm gonna have it as is without anything. Like it's delicious as is by itself. It's more flavorful than a rice. Now let's marry the paratha with the chicken chetanad. This chicken chetanad is so powerful. What's your favorite thing we've had? 
Ah, the chicken chitanag. With this bread. Everything is delicious in its own way, but the dosa has a very special place in my heart. That's the masala chai, yeah. and that is a Madras coffee. Madras coffee, yeah. Oh, that's a Dawras that we This is kind of a holder. So, which helps to mix your coffee, freshly brewed coffee, which is not uh, well mixed with the milk. So, when you're mixing with the coffee, you have to add the sugar in it. Put your sugar over here. And that's a traditional style. You can put the sugar inside the coffee and you can use the syrup to mix it well. That is the one style. It is uh, easy for everybody. And that's a traditional style. We put the sugar on the, this one. And we use this one. If the coffee and the milk is already mixed, and we're going to mix it with this. So when you're doing like this, the flavors, everything get mixed well. And also the flavors come out. People like to drink with the... Uh, Home. Ah. Like this. Mm. If you go to come on, some of the tea and coffee shop in India, they use the big jugs, little jugs for mm. two of them, and making coffee for around 15 to 20 people. But the same 20 tumblers, they make a big jugs and pour it up and down, and they mix it everything and give it the foam. That's highlight of the coffee. Mm. It's all with the foam on the top of that. Careful when you hold them. Mm, <laughs> Thank you. So foamy now. Very smooth. It is so interesting. It is like in the middle of cappuccino and latte. A little bit of milk mocha taste. So complex. But very smooth. So Madras coffee has more caffeine than an espresso, however with an espresso you're not mixing it with like a milk. Here it is mixed with other stuff. So although it has more caffeine, it might not taste as strong as an espresso. I don't drink coffee much, so I don't really have much comparison to anything. Um, it is delicious. This is my masala chai. Still a little hot. Gotta wait a little bit. After having your um, Madras coffee, I can't really taste the masala chai. <laughs> the Madras coffee is way more flavorful. <laughs> that was pretty filling. And next time we come back here, we're gonna order the goat curry. The gentleman who was serving us today, he was very helpful and was explaining every dish. Before he knew I was a YouTuber, before he knew what anything I was doing, he was super detailed and like telling us about not just the food but some Indian culture. Uh, it's Friday, uh, we're full. We're gonna... Oh, there's a place I wanted to show you before we go home. There's an Indian temple nearby. About a six minute drive away is the Hindu Temple and Cultural Center. As it says on their website, it's a place of worship to celebrate festivals and other important occasions. Now this is not a tourist spot, but I wanted to show you the Indian culture that exists in Washington state. So I just got some exterior clips. Remember those Indian snacks we picked up at the market? Let's try them! First up is Soam Papri. On the package, it looks like Papdi. But I listened to a bunch of pronunciations online by native Indians and they pronounce it as papari. Traditional Indian flaky sweet with almonds and pistachios. I love this golden pattern. We brought two cups of water just for a, just for a palate cleansing. Whoa! On the box it shows cubes, but in real life it doesn't look pre-cut. We need to cut. All right, but a bigger dish? It's like a dry cake. Oh, yeah, it cuts real easily. That's what the inside looks like. I love it. Wow. It's flaky and then it just melts so fast. Mm -hmm. It tastes creamy, but in a dry way. You do get a little thirsty. I'm guessing the creamy flavor is coming from the desi ghee. It also has chickpea flour and cardamom. This is addicting. Mm -hmm. So addicting. Mm -hmm. Very addicting. <laughs> it's almost the heavenly. Mm. On to the second snack. This one says Gujarati mixture. 
It's got sweet and spicy blend of chickpea flour, noodles, a rice flakes, and peanuts. Checking out the ingredients, there's also red chili powder. Might be a little spicy. Sounds dangerous. Oh, where's the lossy? <laughs> I don't feel a spiciness yet, but I do taste the uh, spices. And this texture is quite nice. It's um, it's firm, but a smoother crunchiness compared to like uh, your normal potato chip. I'm feeling the spicy now. Nice snack. It's a very good combination. A little bit sweetness, a little bit saltiness, and a little bit spiciness. Triple S. <laughs> Sweet, salty, spicy. And savory. I kind of feel like I'm eating a uh, dried ramen, like before it's cooked. On to the next one. Let's bite into the milk bikis biscuits. Oh, it looks like waffles. Oh, it's uh, the smell reminds me of vanilla cookies. Oh yeah, yeah. Very crispy. I'm not sure if this is imported directly from India. Sometimes when food and snacks are imported. It might lose some integrity. It might get some humidity inside, or something that happened along the way, making the snack or the food taste less tasty. But this one, crispy, so delicate. Sweetness doesn't come first time you bite; just comes more and more through your tongue, through your nose. I really like it. It's good for like a daily tea time thing. Uh, yeah. Fourth snack. Let's go. Will nice taste nice? The silhouette of the cookie reminds me of stamps. The outside has apparent pieces of sugar, and on the front it says nice. The back is just a texture. It is a light coconut flavor, but the texture it feels like some moisture got to it. Or is it supposed to be like this texture? I think it's supposed to be like that. It's just too dry. Yeah, but compared to um, these biscuits, mm. oh. like these biscuits are so satisfyingly dry. Okay, which of the four is your favorite? All of them. <laughs> Everything was great, but my favorite are the first three we tried. On to the next part of the video. So there's another Indian restaurant in Issaquah called Rajdani, which serves Gujarati and Rajasthani cuisine, vegetarian and unlimited thali. Thali is a meal served on a platter filled with small bowls. It was Saturday lunch, and I met up with Angela. She creates hiking content on Instagram. I forget the name, but this bowl was one of my favorites. I didn't film this location in detail, but I did want to let you know about this place. Definitely would come back again. It cost twenty-two dollars and ninety-nine cents for that whole plate, the whole thing. They give you the platter, and then they come by and fill it up. You know, when you go get dim sum, they bring in a cart, and then they ask you, "Would you like this? Would you like that?" They also come around and be like, "Would you like this? Would you like that?" Other time, they just put the stuff on your plate, and they ask also, "Would you like more of this?" Except with dim sum, you pay more for each item, but here you could get refills without paying extra. That concludes part two of the Indian food tour around Seattle. To watch part one, check the video link in the description box. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. For those of you who are into arts and crafts, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Creative Chillout. Toodles, my noodles. Well, kind of seals on the kidney beans. It's a sabana now. We call it. It have a lot of starch in it. They use it for the desserts and uh, kind of for breakfast dishes. And in India have a lot of uh, rice, different rices. Around 200, 300 different rices from local harvesting things they do. And this is one kind of rice which is uh, more softer. When we use it, uh, we call it idli. It's kind of a dish very famous in India. Pancake idli. This three is combination of this. They, this one served with the same condiments of chutney and sambar. In India, everywhere you go to the street, even though if you go to 5 star hotel, 3 star hotel, everywhere you can get that uh, igli and vada. So this is the spices mostly used in uh, Chitti Nadu cuisine in uh, Tamil Nadu, southern part of India. Major 5 states, uh, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra and the Pondicherry. Green cardamom and the black cardamom. This is one of the very unique uh, kind of spices called Marathi Moku. Very oldest uh, spices which will be more flavorful, more strong. 
they especially use for the strong flavor curries. Chettinad people, they use particularly use this uh, spices for the Chettinad chicken. This is the lentil called Urutal. Bengal gram. Yeah, this is Bengal gram. This one, they use it for the coconut chutney. We call it Tur Dal. The sambar is made up of that. Oh, that's the mung bean? Mix up the rice and other things. And peel, this is the peel one. Mm -hmm. So with tea skin, this one. Laos that is more uh, strong and bitter flavor. Mm. Even though when I had the cavity problems, I used to take a bit of bit of piece, one piece, mm -hmm. just chew it, and keep it over the, the you know the cavity thing. It helps with the cavity. Yeah, it really helps. Yeah. So when you keep it there, it's kind of spicy. It keeps sometimes for a few minutes. It stick make you little burn from the other outside of your teeth. But I'm sure after that, for an hour or two hours, it will be a pain relief. They use the mustard oil to cook the food. Mustard oil. Yeah. If you come to the southern part of India, they use more about uh, Kerala, they use the coconut oil. Come to uh, Tamil Nadu, they use the, we call it gingerly oil. That's kind of a uh, sesame oil. Uh, this is called the garam, garam masala. So most of the people, they use the garam masala. It's a combination of uh, four to five to six spices of blender. That's the cumin. Yeah, cumin. And that's the, the cumin, cumin powder. powder. What are your top dishes here? Uh, if you like spicy, try the goat curry and uh, chicken chettinad. If you like uh, curry leaf or something, we have the special uh, curry leaf. That is uh, uh, the, our chef uh, secret recipe. Uh, he make it really uh, tasty as a curry leaf uh, flavorful curry. So vegetable kurma, that is good too for a vegetarian option. If you like spicy, try the vatta kolombo. That's kind of a uh, turkey berry. It's kind of bitter. They keep the, the turkey berry in the sunlight, they make it dry. It's kind of a very dry spices. That one uh, will be fried in the oil. They put it over the kind of uh, sour gravy, which is made of uh, tamarind and uh, mm, tomato flavor. When I was asking the guy on the phone, like which protein option do you recommend? You can also get like vegetarian, but he was saying, oh, you know, the lamb, the uh, texture is so good. So we went by his recommendation. This is Pakistani style basmati rice, slow cooked in saffron. My mustache area is sweaty too. I got a sweat stash. I was like, we're running out of space, but remember, I can extend this table. And look, there's a poha here from last time our Indian food tour. <laughs> Crows, seagulls, and ducks. What is the orange slime? It's likely iron bacteria. It's natural and safe. The bacteria that feeds on iron in water. <laughs> yeah, there's something. You're inside. looking through it like a telescope. <laughs> it was inside. Ooh. Okay. Dosa is typically a thin and crispy pancake made with fermented batter of lentil and rice. There are many types of dosa. For example, masala dosa has spiced potato filling. Ragi dosa is made with finger millet. And there is even chocolate dosa. The edge is crunchy. Yes. So we didn't show you the yeah. empty plate, but the dosa, we finished it. Boom, gone so fast. Their jackfruit ice cream is said to be really good, but uh, we were feeling something warm and steamy. 